So fellow KO students, faculty, and staff members, welcome to this special session. KO has a tradition of open dialogue between world leaders and next generation leaders, our students, you. Today, we welcome Sam Altman of OpenAI, creator of ChatGPT, and on behalf of all KO, I'm so grateful to Sam for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much for coming. Relations between Sam and KO started in 2018 when we hosted the event entitled Y Combinator Meetup in Tokyo on this very campus. Back then, Sam was the CEO of Y Combinator. As many of you know, Y Combinator is an iconic technology startup accelerator that has contributed to the launch of more than 4,000 companies, including Airbnb, Amplitude, Coinbase, Dropbox, et cetera, et cetera, in an alphabetical order. So um, nice to meet you again. We just met three minutes ago. Um, so welcome back to KO. Thank you. And, uh, so I heard that uh, yeah yeah so you are here two months ago in Japan yes so this is actually the second time you are in Japan so yes. welcome back to Japan and uh, let me ask you uh, what brought you back to Japan so soon after the um, after April visit Um, so, uh, from now on, I'd like to solicit questions from the floor, and uh, um, I, would like to remind, I would like to remind everybody um, to ask Sam questions in English, okay? And then each question should preferably be less than 30 seconds, right? And definitely less than one minute, okay? Um, and uh, please limit yourself, yourselves to only one question. One person. Uh, and do not state any of your personal information, such as your name, affiliations, etc. for we may make today's video recording public, right? Okay, so uh, please raise hand if you have questions. Wow. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, uh, there are three or four microphones, so um, please give microphone to three people. So please stand up and ask a question. First person, okay? Uh, hi, Mr. Alton. Uh, it's really an honor for me to ask you a question now. So let me quick hug. So like Steve Jobs, like as CEO of Apple, he did not allow his children to have like iPhone or like Apple product. So as the CEO of OpenAI, would you do like something similar to yourself or your family? I'd like to hold myself to the bar of building products. I'd be delighted for my kids to use. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So, the, yeah, the next person. Um, thank you for your speech. Uh, I believe that, like, being accomplished, it isn't financially, like, rational for you to, like, keep working. So I believe there's, like, a motivation inside yourself that you want to change the world. But for you, is, like, the motivation, like, always existent in yourself? Or, like, is it, like, sometimes changing? And, like, sometimes do you feel like you don't have motivation or not? Uh, that is what I want to ask you. Yeah, that's a good advice to many of you, I think. Okay, the third person I, who has the microphone. I want to know how to fantasy uh, make reality. Because uh, uh, Asia was very far away several hours ago, but some person is very near for Asia. Hi. My dream is mind uploading, but it's also far away. And uh, right now, mind uploading is all, also far away. I want to know how to make concept become reality. I think you just have to like go work on it and realize that you'll be misunderstood for a long time and that you'll kind of 
sound very crazy for a long time. Thank you. That's good to hear. Thank you. Okay, next. Oh, hello. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick question about like, right now the image that I have is like, it's like Jarvis, you want it to become like Jarvis, like Iron Man, where it helps like Tony Stark and stuff, finding new elements and stuff like that. But what if AI becomes so advanced that we do not like, for example, DeepL had like its newly like last week or something where it found like a new search search algorithm. What if it becomes so advanced? Will it become like the Ramanujan journal where it we we're gonna have to do like research upon what the AI produces? Um, thank you. Uh, in Japan, not only doctor student uh, but also undergraduate or master student are doing research and accepted to top tier international conference on NLP. So in university without large computational resources, what kind of topics or what kind of supports uh, can you, uh, are possible for these students to continue their NLP research? So, so I think we're heading to a time where academic research is again gonna be super important. We've used up the easy gains of the compute overhang uh, hi, thank you for this opportunity. And I would like to ask about how ChatGPT measured ethical standard based on different countries and cultural background. So I'll talk about how we measure it and also talk about how we think about getting this. Um, okay, good. <laughs> thank you. All right, next, please. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think AI is reshaping our society, and as you said, like some jobs is going away. And I think you can tell, like people sitting here are people with privilege. So maybe we can survive easily um, during this time. I hope so. But how about like uh, poor people in like low-income countries? How can we do something for them? That's my question. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, uh, to work in a a uh, company in the Silicon Valley in the future, what kind of skills uh, would be required uh, to attain, um, for example, the skill to utilize the AI and create new stuff or to create another, another system, uh, another AI system like the ChatGPT? Um, a lot. I think being good at programming and being good at like figuring out how to think about complex systems is always helpful. Uh, I think you want a combination of very broad knowledge where you can like take a holistic view of an entire problem um, and specific knowledge in a few areas. So figuring out how to like get that broad base and then where to go deep is important. Thank you for your valuable thought. I think you made a lot of big decision and what is the important thing when you, uh, when you make decision? What's important about making a decision? Uh, what's, it, what's the important thing uh, when making decisions? Um, I think trying to be right with limited data. Like you won't make every decision right, that's fine. Um, but you'd like to get as many right as possible and you never have as much time or as much data as you'd like to have. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance to question. Uh, a country, uh, as you mentioned in a session, like uh, the, uh, the AI just making, uh, kind of making the human, like uh, the AI is gener uh, currently generated as a uh, top down, top down, kind of top down, but like, uh, do you have uh, any vision to make it some kind of bottom up AI or like, uh, like a hu human or something like that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, like right now, OpenAI is making a lot of decisions about what these systems do and don't do and how they're, how they're created. We Thanks, please. Hello, um, it's been a great honor to meet you today and thank you very much for your wonderful insight. Um, I have a question about GPT. And like you mentioned, GPT has both uh, ups and downs, which I see nothing unusual there. But I think the biggest catch there is the more people consider for the downside, the, the slower the development speed would be, whereas the less consideration would be faster, but higher in risks. So I think there's balance there is quite essential in the future. 
And in the recent Japanese article that I read, uh, I believe you mentioned something about reducing the risks. So as a GPT lover myself, I was wondering uh, to what extent do you envision to reducing the risk in GPT? Yeah, it's a great question. The, the Getting the balance right between moving fast enough that people get the benefits, but also making sure we have are able to address the concerns is, is big. I, I think the best way to do that is with good safety systems engineering practice. Hi, uh, can you specifically tell me what is the definition of the omnipotent AI? Also, you know, uh, as AGI that you are talking about. So Thank you. Thank you for your valuable talking. And I am currently using ChatGPT to translate. Uh, among many factors such as reading a large number of books, meeting people who provide opportunities, and putting in relentless effort, what factor enabled this breakthrough the most? Because um, time is uh, short, so uh, whoever has microphones now, uh, they can uh, ask questions, but not anymore. I'm sorry. One more person. Okay, sorry, one more person. Okay, over there. So, yeah, you'll be the last person to. Yeah, so one person who has a microphone, and that's it. Uh, thank you for uh, today's speech. Uh, in Japan, especially on the internet, uh, they have a tendency to using uh, chat GPT to uh, enjoy for natural conversations that uh, resemble human interaction rather than for business efficiency. What are your thoughts on uh, this entertainment-oriented usage of uh, generative AI? Uh, 